Okay, listen up, Pancake. You wrote, walk the long way to lane or walk the path. And I'm guessing you mean when you leash, you want to walk the long way around. Like you want to walk this way around when you leash. And you think that is good enough, but it's not. And I want to explain why. So you don't get fooled. You can only leash if you're playing against a lane where you can interlane. And if you cannot interlane, you cannot leash. And what I mean by entering lane is if they stand here and you interlane, no, then you have to walk around here. But if you walk around here and they are standing here, can you interlane? If they are standing in this bush and chasing you, can you interlane? Because if you're leashing, the minion is already going to be in the middle and they're going to be fighting. If they are standing in this push and chasing and you're coming late because you leashed, they can just zone you off here and let the minions fight and you will lose XP and gold from, from the wave. And if you try to walk up, they will fight you. So you can't enter. So what you want to do instead is if you have a lane where you can't enter, then you need to walk with the wave. And this is what most people don't understand. It's hard to tell people to do it as well because when I have to tell people in solo queue to do this, I'm like spam pinging and they don't understand what I want because they don't understand the concept of walking in with the wave. And that is basically, so you have, a, you have a lane where you can't enter, then you don't want to risk this right and you don't want to walk the long way because then they can stand here. So you walk with the wave, the wave is coming in and you make sure that you're inside the wave. And when you get towards this bush, you either ward it or you can throw a skill shirt inside so you can see if there's people and if there are people, then your whole wave, the whole wave that's going to be around here, will acro towards them and they can't fight you inside six minions. And that's how you interlay. So they have to back off and you get to play the game. We're going to go through some more points actually. Walk the long way. I just showed you this one. Then clear first wave slightly faster than the enemy. Sure, if you can get prior and you can do this, then you will get level 2 first. If you get level 2 first, you will get prior in like the first three waves, basically. Sometimes you can't if you're playing with a melee support or if your support is not hitting the wave or you're getting outranged or whatever. Maybe you get late because you're leashing. Third wave usually means enemy jungle gank and this is dependent on a lot of stuff. Because if you know where enemy jungle started, let's say you're blue side and enemy jungle starts on his own blue, like his bus side, then he's most likely gonna gank on either first wave or second wave. That's his time was to gank. It's very unlikely that he ganks on third wave if he starts bottling. Because then he's doing a very weird clear, which would make his. Uh, it, it would leave his top side vulnerable to getting counter jungled if he's gonna gank bottling on third wave while also starting bottling. So that means. If you know that he starts bottling, um, get a ward immediately or clear the first wave and then get a ward so you're sure that you're not gonna get ganked. Because once you're past those two to three waves, you're safe and therefore your ward is no longer useful because he's gonna be in the top side of the map. So at that point, the only thing you could use your ward for is lane bushes. And of course, if we swap it around, you know this top side, then it's most likely you're gonna get ganked on third or fourth wave. You don't want to ward too early, you want to wait around that time, which is gonna be like 3 to 3.30 usually. Maybe he can take like a really fast path and gank you at like 2.30. If he takes, uh, if he has a really fast clear and he can free camp or something like that, then maybe this can happen. Otherwise, he starts blue side, you're gonna get ganked first to second wave. He starts red side, you're gonna get ganked third to fourth wave, most likely. Next question, stay, always stay parallel to your support. You want to always stay parallel to the bot because that's the triangle. If you ever heard of the triangle before, the basic concept of the triangle is you and your support forms a triangle. This is especially true when you're playing with uh, ranged supports, or it's only true if you're playing with ranged supports. I mean, depending on your supports, right? Because if you have like a hook champ, it can also make sense. You want to be parallel with your support. So if you hook someone, you can follow up easily. So it's just a bit different. But let's take this concept as if you're playing with a ranged support, uh, a mage, an ADC support, an enchant or something like that. Then you want to stay parallel because you're making a triangle. And I know this is not the prettiest triangle, but this basically makes it so if enemy champions enter your guys triangle, like if they go inside this, you can both hit them at the same time. So they're entering like a danger zone basically. And what often happens in solo queue is people will just enter this triangle and not really think about it and people will also be really bad at making this triangle 
so you are kind of on your own in solo queue a lot of times uh, because your support is going to be standing way behind you and you're not going to be able to form the triangle even if you wanted to and you can't just walk up into enemy triangle but if you see that enemy is really bad at making the triangle which is going to happen a lot of times then if you're playing somewhere something where you outrange or something where you can create heavily draven a or whatever then you can uh, you see that they break the triangle enemy support goes back here you can easily walk up to trade right you know you're safe to trade as long as enemy support is not making a triangle and you're walking into it then you're good right you don't want to walk into this because then you're just going to get traded on by both of them uh, keep track of enemy spells sure you need to do this all in all lanes uh, no matter what you play right uh, especially of key abilities right like let's say nautilus throws his hook you shouldn't just let him get away with that like nautilus throwing his hook that shouldn't be a small thing if he throws his hook you should chase them down you should zone them off the wave you should trade with them same thing with like Rakan W, Pike Q, so on, so on, so on. You should not let it go unpunished. Uh, if ally supports CC trade, not sure what you mean. If ally support is CC all in main damage from the lane, not sure what you mean by this. Freeze, push, recall properly. So one of the main big things about being a good ADC is good is having a good recall timings because having good recall timings is gonna enable you that you're not gonna lose that much uh, mid CS when you recall and if you're really good at recall timings you can even cause enemy or opponent to lose cs and you are not losing anything plus if you have really good recall timings you are gonna be spiking on items a lot more than the opponent because adcs they spike on every purchase basically because your auto attacks is what matters the most as adcs most of, i mean most of the gems so something like getting a pickaxe Getting a long sword, getting a B of sword, that's gonna increase your damage a lot. Because if every auto attack is gonna get increased, all your abilities is gonna get increased, of course. So having good recall timings and staying on curve is really good. Because how most people's curves look like is they don't recall, they don't recall, they don't recall. Then they recall with like 2000 gold and get like a huge spike. Then they don't recall, they don't recall, they don't recall. And then they recall on 2000 goals and get a huge spike rate. But instead, what you want to do is you don't recall then you get a recall and you get like a long sword then you don't recall you get like a big x right don't recall you get like another thing so you keep a very steady curve and you can just stat check people at that point if if you come back to a lane and you have more items than them even minion rule if minions wave is equal or push up or yeah and that is true so if the wave is equal in numbers and so not even equal actually Let's take this one because it's not only equal. Let's say you have a wave that is this close to your own turret. Then even if he has, let's say, three more minions, it's most likely still going to be pushing towards him. Even if he has three minions, because three minions is not enough to hold it here. You need to thin it out. It's going to push back. Um, and then we could take like up here maybe it's like two right and up here maybe it's like one and then up here it's equal something like that right and that's because the reinforcement of your own minions they are closer proximity to the wave than his reinforcements to the minions so it doesn't even need to be equal that's also why you say you are you are in a hurry to crash a wave and you end up crashing the wave so it's like here it's like half on a turret half not on a turret and you're worried that you can't recall in that case most of the time you should just recall because it's most likely to bounce back anyway because it's that close to the turret that the enemy reinforcements will come and it will change it anyway even if you have like three more minions than than his way then let me just tell you something and that is so what i tell to every adc i ever coach is there is like three stones of a good adc it's on my text as well and number one is recall timings. We talked about that one already. Recall timings. Then you have general laning. And that is everything in lane phase like trading, tethering, cooldowns, general matchups, general uh, wave management, auto spacing, of course. Um, and then we have team fighting. Because every good ADC needs to be good at team fighting. If you're not good at team fighting as ADC, how are you going to play ADC? Doesn't really make sense. And that includes target selection, you need an escape route, you need to know which way you're going to kite, uh, 
We need to keep track of cooldowns. All of that good stuff. And then, besides these things, and this applies to pretty much every role in solo queue, because solo queue is just about being selfish and becoming a god, right? So this pretty much applies to all roles, but especially ADC, and that is, you want to hit 8 plus CS a minute, so this number in parenthesis, you really want that one to be 8 or higher, so you can solo carry the game, and you want low deaths. Because low deaths, I mean, the, the higher deaths you have, the more downtime you have. Uh, downtime you have. Because each time you die, you have to wait for your death timer, then you have to run back to lane. Plus, in that time, your opponent is able to shove in the wave, and you're gonna lose a lot of CS. And even if you like, if you die in mid game, late game, that's a lot of time where you can't get any resources on the map because you are busy being dead. That is incredibly bad. So. Lower your deaths, get high CS, and that is the key to every role, but especially ADC, right? What you can try to keep track of is how much you CS the first 10 minutes. Because the first 10 minutes, your CS should be at least 70. At least, at the very, very least 70. If it's not, I would suggest you start going into practice tool daily and just doing some CS practice. But I'm assuming, I'm just gonna assume that you get at least 70. At 10 minutes it should be higher but at least 70. then when people see us starts to fall immensely what you need to keep an eye out for is mid game and mid game starts falling significantly because what people tend to do is they fight too much you join every fight you sit mid lane with your mid laner the rest of the game and share xp and gold three people four people and then your CS is just gonna start dropping. So what you want to do instead is, you want to be selfish, we're playing solo queue, we want to be selfish, we want to avoid random fights, unless you feel very confident that you can gain something from the fight. If you feel very confident that you can gain a kill or two or something like that, sure, go for it, because then it's just easy gold, right? Otherwise, be selfish, avoid random fights. Sure, you can go mid lane. If your mid laner refuses to, to move, you need to have the mindset that for the next six to eight minutes you are just trying to soak as much resources on the map as possible so you clear the mid wave it's cleared then you look around look around on the map can i go top and catch a wave can i go butt and catch a wave go do that if you can is there any camps up could i take raptors wolves um, could i take enemy raptors if, if so, you can do that. And then once you do one of these things, you go back to mid lane, you clear a wave, and then you do it again. Can I take something? Can I go somewhere? You do it, then you come back mid lane, clear a wave, and you just keep doing that, soaking up all the resources on the map. Especially in lower elo. This is especially how you carry in lower elo, because there is so many resources getting lost in lower elo. There's just nothing. They're just dying to turrets, or they're just dying to minions and people are not catching them and if you catch all of it you're gonna be sitting on a lot more items than your opponents and you're gonna be able to carry the game alone so really look for these opportunities especially in side lanes let's say your mid laner he refuses to go to a side lane right then you see you see let's just take an example where this surge that this surge that you see that this wave is like pushing out it's stacking up this is beginning to, to look like a big ass wave you want to walk down and catch that before your mid laner he recognizes what's gonna happen and your mid laner because he's gonna be dipshit low elo he's not gonna realize what's happening so he's not actually gonna see this wave uh, before it's like this close that's when he's gonna notice it so you're gonna notice it five seconds before him so you can move down and catch the whole thing once you catch the whole thing it's your turn to push push and you can push and you can push one more if you feel safe if you don't feel safe um, don't push this one of course and that's a lot of, of cs that you're gonna get from this because you're catching a whole ass wave and then you're pushing a whole ass wave then you can maybe you can take like procs or bromp or whatever it's a lot of fucking resources this is what you, is gonna win you games this is what is gonna win you games uh, not all <laughs> not of all that other small shit you need your resources so you're gonna hit 11 CS a minute 
this is by the way i have to explain this since people on tiktok don't get it this is an over exaggeration i'm not expecting you to actually hit 11 cs a minute this is just my way of saying hit the highest possible cs a minute and have the lowest deaths possible hit your items and once it gets to team fights you will show them who is the better adc and you will carry team fights alone never blame your team always blame yourself go look at your team fights if you had the resources to carry the game look at the team fights why did you not carry what did you play wrong were the team fights where you should have been there but you were not where you're not in a position to carry you need to position yourself as a carry when you're not playing aggressive enough, when you're not targeting correctly, when you're not waiting off some other spells, should you have gate for something, should you have flashed something, it's always your own fault. Especially if you have the resources to carry, there's no one else to blame. If you are 20 and 0, and your team are all like 0 and 5 or something like that, you are not blaming these guys, because it's not... It's not up to them to carry this game, it's up to you to carry this game. You are the one with 20, you know, you are the one that has the resources, you are the one who should take the blame if you're not carrying this game. Right, good shit.